Okay. Uh, so, during last week, we studied about aggregate demand and aggregate supply. And uh, at the end of the lecture, I said that there are several ways a policymakers can respond to uh, recessions or even overheating of the economy. So, there I said there are two things which can be done, one of which is doing nothing uh, or apply the wait and see game. Uh, so, uh, that is mainly uh, in line with the classical economic theory where the classists believe that the government do not need to intervene in order to, uh, <coughs> to uh, make the economy go back to its potential level and the price uh, the market is always clear uh, because price would adjust through the interactions of supply and demand yeah so for example let's say uh, uh, there's a highway and there's a speed speed limit of 50 kilometer per hour yeah so you are going in a car and uh, during uh, a normal time your potential or your you're given a uh, the speed the speed would be around uh, 50 km per hour but let's say during rush hour there will be high tra traffic in that uh, particular highway and because of there are so many cars in the highway there will be a lot of traffic so because of the, of the traffic it is given that the speed of the your car will be lower than the potential uh, level of 50 km per hour yeah so in that case, uh, now you will be below if we uh, apply it to an economy, you know, you will be below the uh, potential GDP level. Uh, so uh, one way to do it is as per classists uh, suggest, you just wait it out until the uh, uh, traffic clears and when the traffic clears out, you will be able to reach to your potential uh speed of 50 kilometer per hour yeah so that's one way to do it then uh then the other one is the government intervention through uh uh fiscal policy or monetary policy so this is uh, mainly uh, we call it the keynesian economics so where, uh, which is named after john maynard Keynes, who was a, a really famous uh economist in the early 90s uh 1900s years so uh, so basically they believe that the government need to intervene in order to speed up the recovery process of the economy uh, which might arise due to uh, a recession or you or even though if or let's say if it is a if the economy is overheating as well they believe that the government need to intervene so that the economy goes back to its potential level sooner rather than later yeah so for example in the case of highway let's say there was a huge uh, truck uh, which meets an accident uh, with an accident and it is covering the full highway and no car is being able to pass this highway yeah so if the uh, police or the tow yard people does not come and tow this particular big truck out of your way you will not be able to move along the highway no matter how long it takes yeah so if you are to wait until the market or the uh, market adjusts we don't know how long you will have to wait so that's why we need uh, government intervention so that's why the government intervention comes either from the monetary policy side or the fiscal policy side that we will be covering during this week so first of all i will be covering the monetary policy during this uh, particular uh, session and then before tomorrow uh, tomorrow's uh, before attending tomorrow's tutorial uh, i will be uh, covering fiscal policy which is just around uh, 17 slides so we'll be able to cover that sooner so in the monetary policy uh before going to monetary policy i'll give you some details of what is money and everything so we'll be uh, so after this uh, lecture you should be able to define what is money so uh what 
causes the fluctuation in demand in money and what uh, are the types of money in the Maldives today and how does the banks create money so the bank, uh, money creation process you should be able to learn and what are the determinants of demand for money and how are interest rates determined in an economy and how does this interest rate relates with real GDP and the price level of an economy as well. Then uh, before going into monetary policy, we will look into the roles and responsibilities of the central bank. And uh, we'll, you should be able to uh, describe what is monetary policy and what are the tools and frameworks which are used to uh, conduct monetary policy by the central banks. Then uh, how does central bank changes the money supply by conducting this monetary policy and how does the change in the money supply and the interest rates influence the real GDP and the price level of an economy as well. And in addition to this, I will ha I have added few slides on the, how the monetary policy is conducted here in the Maldives, mainly because it is my turf. So I will be explaining how it is done here in the Maldives as well, so that you will have some applied uh, idea of uh, the policy. So first of all, uh, what is money? So in economics, money is anything that is generally accepted in payments for goods and services. So if it is generally accepted by the general public or and the uh, institutions as a, a form of payment for goods and services, then we will consider it as money. In addition to this, there are three other functions of money, first of which is that it should act as a medium of exchange. So money is an object that is generally accepted in exchange for goods and services, something similar to the definition of money. So in the absence of money, people would need to exchange one good for another directly. So we call this the barter system. No? Something very common in economics, uh, basic economics. The, all level is about here when you are a common chicken and barter system. Okay. Then uh, money should have unit of account. So a unit of account is an agreed measure of stating the prices of goods and services. So goods and services value for and use for a way the unit of uh, the, this particular money, for example, if you want to value uh, uh, an apple, you can you should uh, you should be able to value it with money. So, for example, apple can be valued as it is for rupiah or one dollar. the value pura use pura when jehene money. Then the money should have store of value so that it can be held for a time and later exchange for goods and services. So you can, uh, if it is money, you should be able to save it for now and then use it in the future. But uh, let's say perishable good day money go to the use kura ka vana ma. Me har miya do ekani eti use kura me. Tan kola half tai phone use kura ma balayaro eti halal phone na it will not have any value in the future. No? So have your money should have store of value as well. There are two kinds of money, one of which is Commodity money. Commodity uh, takes the form. Uh, money takes the form of a commodity with intrinsic value. So even though it is not considered as, as a money, this particular commodity had its own intrinsic value. Yeah. So for example, gold coins. Puri kavara kena use for karne gold and also let's say in Prisoner of work camps, the cigarettes are used as money to buy one uh, other things. So it is uh, uh, very variable in such uh, such places. So <clears throat> that's why uh, even without it being money, it, it has some intrinsic value. That is commodity money. But today's in today's world, what's more common is fiat money. So fiat money is money without any intrinsic value. Uh, used as money because of government and central banks decree. So usually these are paper money. Uh, so uh, 
if the government backing or the central banks backing is not given for this type of money it does not hold any value for example raj uh, 1000 rupee are not if the central bank is backing is not there then that particular note does not have any value, any in intrinsic value attached to it. So, this is fiat money. For example, it has uh, it is Maldivian rupiah, US dollar, Indian rupee, Malaysian ringgit, and so on. Yeah. So, to give you a brief history of the money in the Maldives, Historical evidence in Fernagotu that the oldest form of money used in the Maldives was cowrie shells. So it was used even before 1200s. So that is uh, evidence in Fernagotu that Rajak M. Puringi ka beno koregon money form. The first coin minted in the Maldives was called Digulari. So this is how it looks like. So Himakon Diguko mainani this Digulari. And it looks like something like a tweezer you would use to make your eyebrows. Yeah, so something like that. Then uh, in 1913, Moldavian currency was first minted out of the country in abroad. The first paper money currency uh, in the Maldives was issued in 1947. So this was during uh, Muhammad Farid Trust Company. So I have a, given a link here, so you can go to this link uh, if you want to look, know more about it. And also, I have uh, given a link of the video at the end of the slide, so you can go through it if you want to learn more about this as well. Then, uh, what is money in Maldives today? Nuniyamo in any given economy, what is money in the Maldives? Uh, in uh, what is money today? So it consists of the currency. So this includes the paper notes and uh, coins held by households and so on. So these are the printed or minted money, uh, hard cash, which uh, which uh, households and firms hold, uh, which are issued by the central bank. The other type of money is deposits at the banks and other depository corporations. Yeah. So deposits is also a form of money so but uh one thing to remember is that uh let's say the comet depositaka evaraka there will be no hard currency in the economy so that's something you need to remember always so that amount of deposits in an economy will be more than the amount of the hard currency or the printed currency yeah for example rajega currently our deposits, both local currency and foreign currency deposits together are, are about 30 billion rufia, around 35, 38 billion currently. But our currency or the currency in the currency circula in the circulation is around uh, 3 billion or more recently it is 4 billion now. So it is much smaller compared to the deposit levels. Yeah. Then, uh, when we measure the money stock or the money supply, uh, how do we measure it? So, there are two main official measures of money in the United States that are M1 and M2. In the case of Maldives as well, the money supply is either considered M1 or M2. So, the M1 consists of the currency which I have given be showed before. It is a printed notes and uh, minted coins and travelers checks. And in addition to that, the check-in deposits on by individuals and businesses are considered also in the M1 or in other words, M1 na mikiani narrow money. So these check-in deposits say the transfer deposits on on demand bagutung, you can withdraw those without any prayer notice to the banks. So because these are liquid, we consider it in narrow money. Then there are M2, or we call it broad money. So M2 consists of everything in M1, plus some 
uh, other forms of de deposits which are not as liquid as check-in deposits so which includes time deposits and saving deposits so uh, mainly these are not as liquid because you will have to give prayer notice to the uh, banks before withdrawing these so wagutung eha liquid kum viben hunna deposits and no mia ki ehem vege falls under m2 of course i money as me fall money then money market mutual funds and other deposits also come under this so as you can see in here the purple uh uh portion here that is currency and travel checks those are the most liquid the most liquid ones are those so that plus the check in or the demand deposits at the banks uh immediately equal lima we are getting the m1 or the uh narrow money then in addition to that if we add m1 plus time deposits plus saving deposits plus money market mutual funds and other deposits then we get m2 or the broad money so the money supply it could be either m2 or m1 then uh, uh let's look at the components of money supply in the case of mortgages so m0 which i haven't explained to you guys the first so m0 is actually monetary base so monetary base ki got to go at the end of april 2020 rajya gami hodi 12.3 billion m1 noni nero money ki got to gami hodi 16.1 billion quasi money ki got to gami hodi 22 billion m2 or broad money gami hodi 38.1 billion rupees hmm? so let's go into more detail of how what includes in each of these so m0 noni money she base noni reserve money gami hemeni currency in circulation or meki central bank um print ko noni mint ko circulation na nere rupees hmm? so a the plus commercial banks in mma ga bahatta fa hunna deposits deposits of the banks at the mma so mainly this is to meet their reserve requirements which we will go through uh, in the upcoming slides then nero money or m1 ga sare ga mihimani the currency in circulation plus as i have said the transferable no need checking deposits denominated in rufia okay? so rufia in denominated div demand deposits no need transferable no need checking deposits me fall wani m1 get area then quasi money get area me fall wani <coughs> all other mvr deposits that includes saving and time deposits plus all foreign currency deposits are also falling under quasi money saka uh, foreign currency ke sunna na hama transferable deposits sa saving deposits sa time deposits sa like foreign currency ke transferable deposits nero money ke theriya no one any because rajya ka debt foreign currency for the use kuru me kuri we have to convert it back to uh, rufia so a conversion annati ve it is considered not as liquid as the transferable mvr deposits that's why it is it falls under quasi money then m2 on me and need the narrow money plus the quasi money so me they think he made me hurry ha it's a equal the me live any m2 that is currency in circulation plus transfer of the deposits are uh, denominated in mvr other mvr deposits and all foreign currency deposits a hurry ha it's a equal the me live any m2 or broad money we are calling it in the case of money so as to rajya ga money supply ye bunima we are mostly referring to m2 okay? so keep that in mind <coughs> then how do banks create money uh as you guys might know banks can mean any two main two functions one of which is taking deposits from customers the other one is lending loans to the customers so when banks use the deposits of the customers to lend loans to other customers they are actually creating money 
which is not previously exist in the economy. So the quantity of money that banks may uh, can create is limited by three factors, one of which is the monetary base, the other one is the desired reserves, the third one is the desired currency holdings. We will we'll check in more detail what uh, of how uh, what are these two. So first of all, the monetary base. So monetary base, in other words, we call it as high powered money. Yeah? So as I have uh, shown in the previous slides, the monetary base or M0 is the sum of the currency in circulation and the bank's deposits at the central bank. So Miyaki mainly reserve requirement ke gotuga commercial banks in central bank bahatta deposits the so in other words these are these are the liabilities of the central banks towards the commercial banks so eba we follow one monetary base so ega mehimeni de by monetary base ke mehimeni currency circulation plus the uh, deposits of commercial banks at the central bank the size of the monetary base limits the quantity of money that the banking system can create because banks have desired reserves and households and firms have desired currency holdings and both these desired holdings depends on the quantity of money okay. so uh, monetary base in a limit kure how much money the banking system can create mainly because banks in Ebahure desired reserves which we will see more in detail and also households also desire to hold some amount of money with them so me both of these desired reserves and desired currency holdings also depend on how much quantity of money are currently in the economy as well. Okay. So desired reserves are ko back and balanyamo. In fractional reserve banking systems, banks keep a fraction of deposits as reserves and use the rest to make loans. So fractional reserve banking system make the banks will have to keep a certain percentage of their total deposits as reserve requirement at the central bank uh, and baki where they can use to lend loans yeah. so deposit ke baki percentage me jehani reserve requirement ke go to the central bank ka bahata. so that particular percentage cannot be used to lend loans to the customers so baki be we use for any to make loans uh, in the under a fractional reserve banking system so this is a, a most common type of reserve banking system then there are then if, if there is no banking system there will be no money creation then there is the other extreme where we have the hundred full uh, reserve banking system known 100 percent reserve banking system where the banks will have to keep all their deposits as reserves so there will be no money creation because 100% reserves but they can use any money to lend loans so there will be no money creation fractional reserve banking system make a money money creation process so most central banks establish reserve requirements so which are the regulations on the minimum amount of reserves that banks must hold against deposits so Rajegavis, there is a reserve requirement called minimum reserve requirement that the banks will have to keep. Currently, it's at 7.5%. So that means the banks will have to keep 7.5% of their total deposits as the minimum reserve with the central bank. But even though uh, there is a minimum reserve, the banks might hold more than this minimum amount. Yeah. So the desired reserves will be the reserve requirement, which is mandatory under regulation 
plus any other voluntary excess reserves kept by the commercial banks. They might keep voluntary excess reserves to make, for example, to make settlements between banks. So they might keep a portion as the excess reserves without lending notes, even after meeting the reserve requirements. So the total reserve ratio is the fraction of deposits that banks hold as reserves. So this total deserve, uh, desired reserves divided by the total deposits in millibani reserve ratio. Hmm? Then there is currency for your holdings or desired currency holdings. So people hold some fraction of their money as currency. So when the total quantity of money increases, so does the quantity of currency that people plan to hold. So this leakage of reserves into currency is called currency drain. The ratio of currency to deposits is the currency drain ratio. So basically, hard currency either in our wallets or at home some place safe. No? So that is mainly to buy, let's say, day-to-day uh, -day, uh, we would need to keep it. Yeah. So uh, that is uh, we, uh, currency holding uh, amount of currency drain. So the amount of money we are willing to hold with us divided by the total deposits in the banking system there we get the currency drain ratio hmm? so for example there are a hundred thousand deposits in the uh, banking system and uh, the total economy people are willing to hold the currency of uh, the amount of 10 uh let's say 10000 uh, rupiah is a uh, currency holding so this 10000 divided by the total deposits of 100000 a ratio a key the currency drain ratio so let's look into the money creation process as i have said the money creation process ami effect pura kanta so the money creation process begins with an increase in the monetary base. The Fed conducts uh, an uh, open market operation in which it buys securities from the banks. So the Fed, the, key, we, the central bank of the United States. So money creation process, we start money by an increase in the monetary base. So monetary base the increasing unknown, let's say Fed is conducting open market operation, which we will go more into detail. So open market operation that they are buying securities from the banks. So when they buy the securities, they will give money to the commercial banks. So we pay for our money a key, new money which is did not previously exist in the economic system. So this newly create this will create new uh, new bank reserves uh, in the economy. So the total excess reserves is uh, the excess reserves is the total reserves a bank will own the total amount of money minus the desired reserves that is the desired reserves are key, the sum of the reserve requirement plus the voluntary excess reserves uh, they want to keep. So immediately take a difference the key, the excess reserves. Excess reserves can be used by the commercial banks to lend loans. Yeah. So let's say this particular diagram shows the money creating process. So let's say initially there is an increase in the monetary base. Let's say the Fed has uh, uh, bought a uh, security uh, from commercial banks and they injected uh, money to the market. So it will create excess reserves or excess liquidity in the banks. Then banks can use this excess uh, uh, reserves to lend loans. So when they lend loans, the quantity of money will increase in the market. Then 
me loans the lend kurima a loan libe me hun they will make new deposits uh, uh used to make payments so they will deposit those money to the uh banking system but they will not deposit the full loan amount but uh, uh, they will keep a keep a portion of that money for their day-to-day -day expenses so that is the currency drain so currency draining it by an agafa loan the full amount and no deposit with him with any full amount over a good amount and deposit money then loan deposit kurima anika under a fractional reserve uh, a banking system the banks are required to keep a portion of their deposits as reserve requirement no also they keep voluntary reserves as a voluntary excess reserves for their day-to-day -day running of the business as well so me by a kind of a demba ki hunna excess reserves anika they can use this portion to lend loans so again the this process will continue like this so let's see uh, an example so let's say the central bank increases monetary base by hundred dollars so uh, in the particular economy depositors uh, prefer to have liquidity of five percent that is they want to keep currency holdings of five percent and also banks are required to have uh, uh, keep a 10% of all their deposits is reserve requirement with the central bank. So here it is. So the central bank has increased the uh, monetary base by 100. So me, uh, let's say public issue kurima, public bond me issue kurani, nonium security and issue kurani. So egg, uh, uh, when uh, the central bank buys the security from the public they will be injecting this hundred dollars a hundred dollars libay me hunga terrain they prefer to keep liquidity of five percent no so me hundred get five percent midani as currency drain yeah then the remaining part is deposited into the commercial banks then the commercial banks can lend uh this uh deposits but they have to keep 10 percent of the deposits as reserve requirements if you make 10 percent kind of a baki in the back they can lend to a new customer as you can see now deposits of a loan core amount me madu 10 percent kind of a million then this particular customer again prefers to hold five percent of the amount as their currency holdings then they deposit the remaining part into the bank again now the banks will have to keep 10 percent of this amount as reserve requirement and they can loan the remaining part again this guy will keep five percent as currency holdings and deposit the remaining at the commercial banks yeah so this process will continue so on. Yeah. So as you can see, uh the deposit of Kafahu loan Kurewe amount Midani Maduwamu. No, loan Kurewe amount Home Farakos Midani Maduwamu. And the process continues. But what is the limit? Kita farto migota deveni kita farto money create money. At any point, midani money create one. Make a home loan key me money creation. They are creating new money. Make a home fund. For example, there was 100 increase in the monetary base. Egg is our own money creation. You know, any home for a loan name. But there is a limit. Yeah. There is a limit to it. The limit is determined by the money multiplier of the economy. So the money multiplier is the ratio of the change in the quantity of money to the change in the money tree base so my tree base and the change the sababum total quantity of money or the money supply in the economy change to that is the money uh, sorry money supply so for example if the fed increases the monetary base by 
100,000 and the quantity of money increases by 250,000, then in that case, the money multiplier is 2.5. So, monetary base some yen only 100,000 get increase. Ekamoku ea guli geng, the quantity of money or the money supply geng eba the 250,000 get increase. So, 250,000 divided by 100,000, you will get the money multiplier. But most of the time, you will only know this particular the 100,000 and uh, the money, um, the quantity of money or the money supply and under change, you will only know after a period of time. Yeah, so 250, you will be able to know after a period of time. But you can know the money multiplier based on the previous uh, historical data. So if you know the money multiplier, you can actually forecast the increase in the money supply due to an increase in the money fee base. So money multiplier get formula the currency holding ratio plus one divided by the currency holding ratio plus the reserve ratio. Yeah. So this is the formula of the money supply money multiplier of an economy so for the Korea uh, the example in which Yamo. so it was said that the central bank increases money uh, money fee ba uh, base by 100 dollars and uh, the depositors prefer to keep liquidity of five percent it is the currency drain ratio banks rec are required to keep a uh, reserve requirement of 10 percent so that is the reserve ratio let's say in this particular example they do not uh, put any voluntary excess reserves on top of this reserve requirement okay. so uh, if we input the data uh, the numbers into the formula so this five percent is written in, in decimals as 0 0.05 and this uh, 10 percent is written as uh, 0 0.1 in decimals so we get money multiplier seven so the maximum possible increase in deposits is seven times this 100 okay so that is 700 okay total increase in deposits and money air booty gang maximum increase in the money supply is 600 dollars a me hundred dollars increase in my fee base are going additional 600 increase ever are they to the money supply yeah so the higher the money multiplier the higher the increasing money supply due to an increase in the monetary base so and also one thing to remember is the higher the reserve ratio the higher the reserve ratio the lower the money multiplier will be as you can see it's the denominator so denominator bodo vivaraka this particular money multiplier number will be smaller. Yeah. So uh, the, uh, the uh, reserve ratio could have a money multiplier will be equal. Then uh, let's look into the money market. So we we'll, we have talked about the goods market where we trade goods and services. So there is a money market as well. A um, money market is a money uh, market in which the financial instruments are exchanged and in which the equilibrium level of interest rate is determined uh, in the goods and services market we uh, we determine the equilibrium level of price no so in money market actually the price of the money is interest rate that's why in the money market the equilibrium level of interest rate is determined so how much money do people want to hold yeah. So the quantity of money that people plan to hold depends on four main factors. So money and demand depends on these four factors. That is the price level, the nominal interest rate, the real GDP, and financial innovation. So let's go get into detail of all of this. The price level. 
uh, as you guys know, uh, you guys know what is the price level in an economy. So a rise in the general price level increases the quantity of nominal money demanded. So that is <clears throat> uh, nominal money is the uh, amount of money measured in dollars. Real money equals nominal money divided by the price level. So real money is adjusted to inflation. Nominal money is without adjustment to inflation. Hmm. Then uh, the key thing to remember here is that when the price overall price level in the economy rises, the demand for nominal money will increase because now the prices has increased and people will need more money to purchase goods and services. That is why the demand for money will increase. Then there is the nominal interest rate. So the nominal interest rate is the opportunity cost of holding wealth. So basically uh, what it is saying is uh, when you, let's say, uh, when you put your money as savings in the uh, at the bank, you will be earning the nominal interest rate. So that is in return, you will be uh, gaining from savings. So uh, that's why the nominal interest rate is the opportunity cost of holding wealth. Holding wealth means uh, uh, investing on goods and services, only consumption, right? Uh, uh, spend the kuru, kurima, uh, kuruma, uh, kurima, you are foregoing the interest you could earn by savings. So, when there is a rise in nominal interest rate uh, on other assets, it decreases the quantity of real money that people plan to hold. So that is mainly because uh, when uh, the nominal interest rate uh, increases, you will be able to gain more by saving. So be because of that, you will be less inclined towards consuming now. So you will save more in uh, consumption that we were like a demand for money is without making that. The other factor is the real GDP. An increase in the real GDP increases the volume of expenditure which increases the quantity of real money that people plan to hold. So in uh, real GDP much at the end, people will be spending more, people will be consuming more. Uh, so because of that, people will be demanding for more, percent, uh, more uh, money. Then the last one is the financial innovation. Financial innovation that lowers the cost of switching between money and interest bearing assets, decreases the quantity of real money that people to hold. For example, financial innovations such as uh, point of sale machines uh, or ATMs, boom, the demand for money will be lower because point of if we had a point of sales machine in Kamgawanama, you won't have to carry hard cash about the so you can use your cash card or uh, cash card to make your purchases. You do not need to demand for money in that case. And also, uh, when there are more uh, ATMs, you can actually uh, withdraw money at any time you want. For example, you will have to go to the bank in bank opening hours and uh, make a withdrawal. So that is a big hustle. So it was difficult to choose, uh, switch between money and uh, the uh, savings, which could you could earn an interest. So. Uh, with these kind of financial innovations, the demand for money that people plan to hold is decreasing. So the demand for money is the relationship between the quantity of real money demanded and the nominal interest rate when all other influences on the amount of money that people wish to uh, hold remain the same. And the quantity of money demanded and the nominal interest rate has a negative relationship, as you can see here. So just like a normal demand curve, it is downward sloping. And uh, if the uh, interest rate is declining, or the, if the interest rate is falling, then the people will demand for more money. And if the interest rate is increasing, then people will demand for lower amount of money. So as you can see here, the price ke is interest rate because it is the price of 
money. Interest rate is the price of money. Yeah. So when there is a change in interest rate, it causes a movement along the money demand curve, as you can see in here. Just like any good sense of surprise and a change of this it will cause movement along the demand curve. Then looking at the shifts in the demand curve, so it is any factor other than the air changes in interest rate causes a shift in the uh, money demand curve. For example, uh, the figure shows a decrease in the real GDP or uh, the increase in the financial innovation, which creates uh, we, uh, which decreases uh, the demand for money and shifts the demand curve leftward. So real GDP, Davima and financial innovation, the Sababong, it will actually lower the demand for money and it will shift demand curve to the left. And the opposite happens when there is an increase in uh, real GDP. So real GDP is increased beam of people will be demanding for more money as the expenditure increases. So there will be a rightward shift in the demand curve or the money demand curve. Then money is supplied. Yeah. What is, uh, how does money supply? So the money supply is controlled by the central bank through open market operations. Because it is fixed, but by the central bank, the quantity of money supply does not depend on the interest rate. So because of that, Kihine Mihar, the money supply curve in Nani, can anybody tell me? How will that uh, money supply curve look like? anybody it is said that uh, it is fixed by the central bank and the quantity of money supply does not depend on the interest rate interest rate in this case is the price of money no? so it is not influenced by any changes on the interest rate so here money supply curve in nine No idea. So it looks like this. It is vertical because at any given interest rate, the money supply does not change no? because it is fixed by the central bank. Central bank the money supply is fixed. That's why the interest rate does not influence the money supply. And it is a vertical supply curve. So money market equilibrium occurs when the quantity of money demand equals the quantity of money supply. Easy, no? The adjustments that occur to bring money market equilibriums are fundamentally different in the short run and in the long run. So we will first look into the short run. In the long run, it's quite easy. So in the short run, so this particular uh, curve shows the money demand. Suppose that the Fed uses open market operations to make quant uh, quantity of money 3 billion. So this is the amount of money supply which the Fed has set via open market operations. So the equilibrium interest rate is 5% per year. So that is the equilibrium price. So if the interest rate in the market is 5%, yeah, oh, sorry, 6%, the, as I have said before, the equilibrium is the 5%, but if the interest rate uh, is at 6% a year, then what we see is that there is excess supply of money uh, and people, uh, so the amount that people are willing to hold is less than 
the quantity of money which is supplied by the central bank. Yeah. So because of that, people will try to get rid of this excess money by uh, buying bonds. By buying bonds. So this action lowers the interest rate. So because there is an excess supply of money, a uh, demand of uh, supply ginavi the me excess the money they will invest in bonds or other financial instruments. So when people start to invest on uh, more on those, the uh, interest rate will fall and go back to the equilibrium level. The opposite happens if the interest rate is below the uh, equilibrium level, then there is excess demand for money. So the quantity of money that people plan to hold exceeds the quantity of uh, money supplied. Supply go huribarabure, boda people plan to hold. So there is a shortfall of money as to in this case and excess demand and create money. So people will try to get more money by the, by selling the bonds that they already have. So they will be selling the securities they have to the central bank and the central bank will be giving money to the uh, people. So this will raise the interest rate because we have this money at demand for our fishing or money at price we much at any room the interest rate will go up and meet in the previous equilibrium level so then we make a any interest rate and under changes is our book in the money so what if there is a change in the supply of money in the show so let's say initially the interest rate is uh, the equilibrium interest rate is at five percent, and if the Fed increases the quantity of money, people will be holding more money than the quantity demanded now. Yeah. So, if they increase the uh, money, uh, the money supply, they will be actually holding more money than the actual demand they have. So, because of that they will buy bonds again because they have more money so central banks get bonds they will buy and the rufia will be collected back to the central bank so because of this the increased demand for bonds rises the bond prices and lowers the interest rate yeah so uh money supply so what happens is there's a shift in the money supply the money supply is shifting IEMA, there is a lower in the uh, uh, there is a downward revision in the interest rate so interest rate affect immunity because there is a uh, shift in the money supply so interest rate uh, be changing I am I say I have said it will create a movement along the money demand so there will be a movement along the money demand curve from this point to this point yeah there will be a lower interest rate so if the uh, opposite will happen if the fed decreases the quantity of money and the people will be holding less money than the quantity demanded then they will sell bonds this will increase the supply of bonds in the market and uh, bonds we have a come fashima the supply of bonds will be in the more in the market so supply gina again was the uh, uh the bond prices will fall yeah so uh i got some money then it will increase the interest rate on the other hand so um anika was uh money supply left for shifting i am uh the reduction in money supply is creating an increase in the interest rate which is which causes a movement along the money demand curve to the left it, and, and here the interest rate is higher so to understand the long run uh we need to know the quantity theory of money so the quantity theory of money is a proposition that in the long run an increase in the quantity of money 
brings an equal percentage increase in the price level. So quantity theory of money ga mibunani long run ga if there is an increase in the money supply or the quantity of money, everyone equal change in the price level as well. Yeah. The quantity theory of money is based on the velocity of money and the equation of exchange. Velocity of money it is the average number of times in a year a dollar is used to purchase goods and services in the GDP. So, one unit of dollar kita to rotate to purchase different goods and services. Or in other words, me one note of currency kita to velocity of money. So, uh, velocity of money is equal to the price level multiplied by the real GDP, which is uh, divide, then divided by the quantity of money or the money supply. So velocity is equal to price level multiplied by real GDP. Yes, so price level into real GDP, millibeni, nominal GDP. No? So nominal GDP divided by the money supply is the velocity. Then by rearranging this particular formula, we will get the equation of exchange that is, we, when we move this uh, uh, money supply to this side, that is, money supply into velocity is equal to the price level into the real GDP. Then, this particular equation becomes the quantity theory of money if M does not influence velocity O the real GDP. So basically what is it is saying is percentage change in money money supply and change the sababum velocity asha real GDP and FS Asaran Kuranyamum then the quantity theory of money will hold. Quantity theory of money in the long run money supply and increase the ever change price level of this unknown. So if, uh, let's say, me equation of money supply is 10% increase with the price level 10% increase, one velocity of real GDP will need to remain constant. So in the long run, the change in price level is proportionate to the change in money supply, as I have just explained. So, when we uh, explain the equation of exchange in growth rates, growth rates apply putting multiplication for the additions. In other words, log we apply for So, percentage change in money supply plus the percentage change in velocity is equal to the percentage change in price level plus the percentage change in real GDP. So when we rearrange this uh, particular formula to make the price level or the inflation rate, the subject, the percentage change in price level lucky inflation rate. No? So inflation rate, subject and hedima, we will get the percentage change in money supply plus the percentage change in velocity minus the percentage change in real GDP. A real minus million. and when we move this uh, to this side, it will be having a minus sign. So the velocity is fairly stable and constant over time. So velocity arm um, it will remain constant over a period of time. That's why ingharum and ingahara it does not grow by much. So we can assume it is having a growth rate of zero. So erum this particular portion will now be zero. So if we keep this zero, then the change in price level or the inflation rate denominated by pi is equal to the percentage change in money growth minus the percentage change in the real GDP. 
So in that case, the inflation rate we are ready, money growth minus the real GDP. In other words, if you want to interpret this, money growth the ever real GDP grow on one year, then there will be an inflation rate. Okay? And money growth of the border, real GDP grow with the yam, then we will have a deflation because there's a negative sign. No, arrow inflation rate will be negative. And money growth the ever real GDP grow one yam, then the inflation rate will be zero. Yeah. And also, let's say in a particular given year in the long run real gdp growth is zero okay? so in the long run if we assume the real gdp growth is zero then it will hold the country theory of money Aaron money growth ever okay? changing ever are they price level numbers money growth will be equal to the inflation rate. so that is the country theory of money so before going into the uh, money, uh, money fee policy part. Let's see what is the central bank. So it is a, uh, an institution which conducts money policy and regulates the financial sector and issues and uh, regulates the national currency of a country. So the first central bank of the world is Riksbank. Uh, of Sweden, it was established in 1668. The central bank of the USA is called the Federal Reserve System or the Fed, which was created in 1913. So this is one of the most influential and most, most well-known central banks in the world. Then Rajaka Central Bank, anybody who are Rajaka Central Bank, okay. Is M no. the central bank for Maldives is Maldives Monetary Authority, which was enacted in 1981. So, functions of central bank of Balayamu the primary function of a central bank is conducting monetary policy of the country. Yeah, that is the main function of a central bank. Other functions include regulation in the financial sector. Issue in the national currency. This is the main uh, thing that the central bank does. I come to the main for primary function of the central bank is conducting monetary policy. But these are also actually huge functions of central bank. So holding countries foreign reserves, reserve so MMA is holding the uh, foreign reserves. And it also serves as a lender of last resort, like a commercial bank, liquidity that is coming as CIAMU. As a last resort, they will come to the central bank because central banking lend Purani at a higher level than all other uh, sources of funds. So, a central bank will act as the last uh, lender of last resort, and also it acts as the banker to the government as well. So, monetary policy key, the process through which the central bank influences the level and the growth rate of money supply in the economy. So, how the central bank influences the money supply of the economy, Makiani, monetary policy. The key objective of the monetary policy is in most countries is maintaining price stability. Or in other words, keeping the rate of inflation low and stable. Bazaar ka takhti ki agu tam member ko ne m ma word fluctuation in nas ekshe ke wa member ko behta wa mikhen price stability. Other objectives of monetary policies include sustainable economic growth, low unemployment rate, interest rate stability, financial uh, market stability. Foreign exchange uh, stability. For example, Fed get mean any dual mandate. It is maintaining price stability and also achieving 
low level of unemployment right in a fahara when there are too many objectives of the monetary policy thing uh if this policy is achieved kurang in the way again right so it is better to have one single objective of the monetary policy but uh, there are uh, central banks doing uh for example fed has dual mandate and they are doing a good job at it as well so monetary policy framework abanya it is how the uh, central bank conducts monetary policy monetary policy framework of mckinney how the central bank conducts monetary policy so there are four main types uh, to stabilize the inflation uh inflation stable uh, stabilize kurang other other frameworks are used for it. first of which is monetary aggregates targeting so this is when we target the money stock as the nominal income for example aharu ke therega money supply unnani meeni varike m2 meeni varike bahattani m0 meeni varike bahat tagging so m2 me ekkurani or m0 me ekkurani nominal income ek kosa in this case so my fee aggregates mechanic m0 m1 m2 h he wa kimi bare ke bahat tagging inflation takkum on low and stable level ek bahat ta it's a try for ma mechanic my fee aggregates targeting so central banks like angola ke central bank and bangladesh bank uh uh adopts my fee aggregates targeting the another type is exchange rate targeting this is with exchange rate what we mean by a bar tagging uh, a country a uh, price stability maintain kuruma a we can any exchange rate targeting for example rajya ga we are adopting exchange rate targeting and other uh, countries like denmark and saudi arabia are also adopting exchange rate targeting then inflation targeting inflation targeting ga we want to keep they target the inflation expectations not the actual inflation rate but the inflation expectations which are kuriyam with tano the inflation kiha varigga to unnani so eight maki min varigga are maintained kuram uh hogging price stability genoma miki any inflation targeting net so the most advanced countries use this type of uh 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 targeting that is inflation targeting uk uh new zealand uh japan and india and more recently sri lanka ka santar ko isme they are adopting inflation targeting then the last step is eclectic where they do not formally pre announce what their target is means like inflation rate come exchange rate come and only my key grades come they do not formally uh announce it but they do try to uh, maintain the price stability for example usa malaysia mauritius ka santar ko they do not formally announce their targets then to achieve these uh, nominal anchors uh, again is a ka exchange rate ba kimi mare ka bahat tan no inflation ba kimi mare ka bahat tan we again use my sheet policy tools so the tools uh, used by the central banks to control the money supply in the economy and mechanical monetary policy tools the fed has three main tools at its money sheet tool, toolbox uh, so any at any given economy we, these are the most common things we make it through of the sure by tools so open market operations is one of these i have referred to open market operations for again for uh in the previous slides so open market operations is the purchase and sale of central bank certificates and bonds central bank in securities and no need a certificate and issue for any uh whether they sell or buy it to influence the money supply for example if they want to increase the money supply in the economy they will buy bonds or buy securities from public so when they buy the securities they will be paying using new currency for example they will be paying to the commercial banks with new currency then because of that 
there will be new deposits created in the banks. So new deposits is available. Banks will have now more excess reserves, which they can use to make loans. So when they make loans using these new deposits, they are creating money. Money create wema. The money supply is expanding. Yeah. And then if they want to reduce the money supply, the central banks will sell bonds from uh, public uh, from uh, to the public. Sorry, it will be to the public, uh, taking dollars out of circulation, and the process works in reverse. For example, if there are too much money in the market, then the central banks will issue certificates. Here, these certificates the will be given an interest. So interest rate at the uh, we are attached one so what happens is central banking uh, certificate and issue for him mostly public in only commercial banks in me uh invest for any in those uh securities so i have a securities give other the banks in there any rufia to the uh, central bank so dollars in the circulation will be taken out and into the central bank you know money supply double again because of that, because there will be fewer money for the banks to lend in our and at the maturity of the securities the, the process will be reversed back and the money will go back to the uh, banks so the, the process will continue to go on so have an open market operation the the Korea bank then the other tool at their disposal is the reserve requirement I have talked about reserve requirement before as well. So uh, it will affect how much uh, money banks can create by making loans. As I said, reserve requirement, the Mibunani central bank requires uh, the commercial banks to keep a certain percentage of their deposits uh, as uh, reserves in the central bank. So deposits give a percentage the central bank the Bahatta is required reserves. So if uh, if the central bank wants to increase the money supply, then the central bank can actually reduce the reserve requirement. So reserve requirement that Kurima Miharo Wanagoski commercial banks in uh required reserves because of the Bahat and Funny. So Dabima now they will have more excess reserves which they can use to lend more loans. So when they lend more loans there will be the money multiplier effect as you know so money supply create again with that the opposite will happen if they want to reduce the money supply if they want to reduce the money supply when you have money and the amount of money which is being created through the loan uh, process then the central bank will increase their reserve requirement uh, commercial banks in Mijahani reserves Bahatta Central Bank. So that means they will be having lower excess reserves now. So they cannot lend as much loans as before. So home deposit of Mumbai's Bodo amount of Mijahani reserves requirement because of the Bahatta. Aero money multiplier with Kuda one reserve requirement Bodo Puri. As I have said before in the uh, in explaining money multiplier. So reserve requirement. Much just the money multiplier, the Kuda money, and the money supply was double again. And uh, opposite happens if we reduce the uh, reserve requirement, if we reduce it, the money multiplier will increase and the money supply will also increase. But one thing to remember is that central banks rarely use reserve requirements to control money supply because. If we change the reserve requirement too much, it will actually disrupt the banking operations, only the banking system. Mainly because of one reason, that is because in addition to reserve requirement being a monetary policy tool, it is also a, regulator, a regulatory or a prudential tool as well. Yeah. So, reserve requirement and Bahat and Ginefara central banks of Nihar require Kurani. Because this are like a for example, uh, uh, 
commercial bank account me hun deposit kura huriha ache they are lending huriha money yet they are lending evas ka reserve ban uba hatta but if all the depositors go at once to withdraw their money then they will not have enough money or any money to cater this demand so eya kushan ne naam lege commerce varak ka reserve be bahatta central banking me require korani so huriha depositors is fara me ane fara me commercial banks carrier who uh, emi hunde deposits is pro kuran diye ima they will at least get 10% of their deposits uh, because the commercial banks are keeping 10% as reserve requirements so ekal regulatory side akon asta mi haru boda reserve requirement ni pahat he we margina emi reserve requirement change kura kam gawana ma there will be disruptions in banking then the third type is the third tool we have is the discount rate so it is the interest rate on loans the central bank makes to uh, banks so as i have said uh, central banks act as the lender of last resort no so commercial banks if they have liquidity crunches runia mo episkal me rufia ge datika me molya mo they can approach to the uh, commercial banks uh, then central bank will give them at a particular interest rate am me kiya ni give them a loan at a particular interest rate am me kiya ni the discount rate so when banks are running low on reserves they may borrow reserves from central banks as i have just explained uh, just now so if the central bank wants to increase the money supply they can lower the discount rate to encourage banks to borrow more reserves from the central bank so yeah commercial banks get discounted that korima will be cheaper for banks to borrow from the central bank so when they borrow more from the central bank they can use these borrowings to lend to the customers ero loans it will be midani and through loans there will be increase in the money supply the opposite can be done if we if the central bank wants to reduce the money supply even so if they want to reduce the money supply they can actually raise the discount rate that means now it will be more costly for commercial banks to borrow from the central bank and they will not borrow as much so they will not have uh, that much money to lend to the customers as well so because of that loans and nohinga ne have bodakan in the market and the money supply will reduce so but one thing to remember is that the central banks uses uh, discount lending to provide extra liquidity when financial institutions are in trouble so in a fahara for example in the case of a recession they uh, uh, commercial banks usually have troubles because uh, for example mihar covid situation are uh, going there are loan moratoriums and some uh, people are not being able to repay their loans yeah, if they are not being able to repay the loans that means the commercial banks will not be uh, uh, getting enough money to cater for the de- uh, demand for deposits as well so uriha i mean deposits nagam fasha kiya mong eya ever kanu honna ne asu mani ye so mikala halate ga the banks can borrow from the central bank to cater for this increased uh, demand for no uh, name this uh, shortfall in liquidity in other words so excess reserves can be can liquidity yeah. so liquidity ke shortfall in asia when they can borrow from the central bank yeah. so if come up if there are no crisis then the central banks rarely use discount lending because the central bank is a lender of last resort kina fahara commercial banks in central bank community m fahu option ne ke kotu ga because kunin boni hai central banks ke rates are higher compared to other sources uh, of uh, loans you can get the banks and even in the like interbank market ke ep bank kun ane bank ka bas borrow kore ve ne so in ep bank kun ane bank ka borrow kora ga their rates will be lower than the central banks this discount rate so gina fahara if there is no crisis 
the uh, banks will borrow from each other means like excess liquidity hunna uh, bank will lend to uh, the banks which are having liquidity shortfalls so ekala both ka kuriyaddani in normal circumstances but in a crisis kuriha tane ka bas kuriha bank ka bas they might have liquidity crunches no so again again in uh, uh the crisis situation central banks will lower their discount rates in a far so let's talk about how the monetary policy relates to the economic activities so how does the interest rate affect the aggregate demand the changes in interest rate will not affect aggregate uh, the government purchases as i have said before in the previous lecture that the government does not act the same way uh, to the changes in prices as the other participants of the uh, economy so uh, interest rates uh, basically like kitne mein interest rates bodo versus government might uh, borrow even uh, they might do even uh, purchases even uh, even though their uh, the interest rates are high so it does not affect the government purchases but they affect the other three components of aggregate demand which is consumption investment and net exports consumption uh, me impact and any wealth effect is i know uh, investment me and any interest rate effect is over net exports and uh, impact me and any change rate is over for example wealth effect me and any uh, let's say if the interest rates are lower that means people can borrow more now uh more at a cheaper price so if they can borrow at a cheaper price they will be feeling more wealthy and they will be consuming more and when they consume more aggregate demand will increase and to uh, uh when the interest rates are low the comma the banks uh, the businesses can actually borrow at a lower price so they can borrow at lower price and they can invest more now so when the investments increases the aggregate demand will shift to the right and also when there is uh, a fall in the interest rate uh, then we want to take the uh, interest rate the bima uh, there is deterioration in the exchange rate of the uh, local currency so local currency depreciate bima uh, the exports of that particular country will be more cheaper for foreigners so the demand for exports from this country will be uh, increasing so that is the exchange rate effect so interest rate are going to be thing effect about it and there will be the changes in aggregate demand as well so how does the monetary policy affect the real gdp and the price level so mainly uh, the data effect monetary policy mean any one of which is the expansionary monetary policy and the other one is the contractionary monetary policy expansionary monetary policy is if uh, imposed when usually when we are in a recession and if we want to increase the aggregate demand then we impose a uh, expansionary monetary policy so fomc ki as to now <coughs> the uh, the committee at the fed uh, so monetary policy committee ka the committee am ya ki so they will be deciding on the policy measures so uh, if they order uh, an expansionary monetary policy then there will be uh, let's say uh, they will be purchasing bonds uh, bonds via open market operation Uh, so purchase of uh, they will be injecting money or they will be reducing the interest rates or they will be reducing the reserve requirement so because of that the money supply will increase and the interest rates will fall then this will lead to increase in the investments consumption and net exports <coughs> leading to aggregate demand curve to shift to right so when the aggregate demand curve shift to the right the real gdp will increase but at the cost of higher prices then contractionary monetary policy yega usually it is done when the economy is overheating economy overheat ma fashima if for mc will 
order confectionery monetary policy where they might order to do open market operations where they will be actually selling bonds and uh, bonds sell kurima they will be mopping up the excess reserves from the market so market already exists in dollars they will be mopping up and taking it back to the central bank which will reduce the uh, money supply or another way is reducing disc discount rates nuniya uh, sorry increasing the discount rates or increasing the reserve requirement so mikan kam ga sababum the money supply will will decrease and the interest rates will increase and then the investments consumptions and net exports will also decrease leading to a shift in aggregate demand curve to the left and because of that the real gdp will fall and the price level will also fall <coughs> so this is uh, uh, shown in uh, in the diagram uh, expansionary multiple cf gavajia on let's say uh, the money supply uh, expansionary multiple c and impose kurima with a true omo no niyam uh, reserve requirement or discount rate uh, then uh, there will be a shift in money supply money supply a uh, right word shift in mainly money supply increase vima the interest rate with up but the interest rate dab vima in investments me ithurwani investments ithurvim interest rate dab again investments me ithurwani investments ithurvim there will be a shift in aggregate demand curve to the right which causes the increasing real gdp from y1 to y2 but it will also increase the price level from initial level to a higher level so the opposite will happen if there is a contraction in my policy so here i have put uh, something for you guys to go through so you can go through it and we know if you have any doubts i have explained this uh, dynamic here in it so this is just for you guys to understand it more with more steps and also the monetary policy helps in reducing the uh, unemployment rate so for example in this case the real gdp is actually lower than the potential gdp level yeah so in here ad is zero ga Uh, the real GDP is lower than the potential GDP. That means we are having a diff, uh, a recessionary gap. So this is a recessionary gap, and we are uh, the economy is in the recession. So that is why unemployment are high. So uh, if the central bank lowers the discount rate, ah, uh, nuniya mong if they lowers the Uh, reserve requirement, or if they conduct, uh, if they uh, inject rufia or money into the market via open market operations, then the aggregate demand curve will shift to the right because there will be increase in investments, consumption, and net exports. So when it is, uh, when the aggregate demand curve is shifting to the right, it goes to the potential GDP level, but the Uh, so a potential gdp level ga the economy will be at the full employment level no so full employment level ga the unemployment rate will be lower than the uh, uh, unemployment rate when the economy was at the recession but at the cost of higher prices then the monetary policy can also help to lower inflation as well yeah? so for example in this case at this particular point what happens is uh here uh the potential gdp of our matiga meaning the real gdp meaning we are having an inflationary gap or the economy is overheating so in this particular point the unemployment rate will be below the natural rate the uh, so uh natural rate of our only full employ full employment the uh unemployment rate unnane varavure dabbane expansionary period ga unemployment rate unna varu so because of that uh, the post for when the uh, and you can see the 
prices are also higher than the uh, actual equilibrium level. The prices are also higher. So when the prices are higher, the input prices are high, and also the wage rate will also be higher because people, uh, the workers will be demanding for higher wages. So because of that, if there is no intervention through the uh, central bank or uh, through monetary policy, what will happen is the uh, suppliers will actually reduce their supply to the uh, reduce their supply because they will have to incur higher costs. So when they reduce the supply, uh, the uh, equilibrium now occurs at the potential GDP level, but at the higher prices, the inflation is even higher now if the central bank does not intervene or through mighty policy. But if the, uh, so even if at this point, if the uh, central bank intervenes, uh, uh, by in, uh, by increasing money supply or through any mean any tools they have, then there will be sorry uh, through reduction. So in the, because it is overheating in this case, they will be reducing the money supply through uh, open market operations by uh, increasing the discount rate by increasing the reserve requirements. Then the investments will fall. The consumption will fall. The net exports will fall, causing to aggregate demand curve to shift to left. So now our equilibrium is back to its initial point, at the actual point where, and also the price level is also low. So monetary policy can actually help in reducing the inflation rate in the economy and also help to reduce the unemployment rate of an economy as well yeah so that's about it on the monetary policy and everything then i will talk about the how the monetary policy is conducted in the case of Maldives. yeah so mma there are four main functions of mma one of which is the issuance and regulation uh, of Maldivian rufia we can again be on the game from a key mma for a couple of the group yeah chop a pro make in a new board and in addition to that there are many things that mma does uh so act together from key of the tips can only regular uh issuing rufia and also licensing supervising and regulating financial sector make it a game and a banks uh uh insurance companies finance leasing companies money changes so a car financial sector regulate and also advising the government on banking and monetary matters and uh, the government give the uh, account was in nani in the mega who would walk here we are making a public bank account then one of the key objective is maintaining price stability in the economy yeah. and make one of the key objective is maintaining price stability Then, Raji ka kihinato monetary policy decisions make kurani. So, the staff of the monetary policy and exchange rate uh, division prepares and presents papers and recommendations to monetary policy committee. So, this is basically asking. So, I work in this particular division. So, we do researches, we do analysis, and we present a policy papers and recommendations to. Uh, monetary policy committee then monetary policy will review our recommendations and take decisions regarding any changes to the monetary policy yeah so then after their review they will be taking it to the board of directors of mma who will make the final decision so we will again present these particular recommendations to the board of directors then the board of directors will finally assign on the final decision so this is the process in the modis so this is in most of the countries but in some cases the monetary policy committee has the power of the board of directors as well for example in the case of fed fomc will have all the power so 
when the staff recommends it the fomc through co they can make the final decision as well then rajya ke mighty policy framework in our tabalan yam our main objective is price stability so as i have said before uh, so by countries the mighty policies ke bahure bavar objectives in the case of modis we have one objective of maintaining price stability to achieve this main ob uh, main objective we have an intermediate target where we actually try to maintain the exchange rate at a particular level so why do you think that in the case of modis exchange rate is the intermediate target why not misal ka interest rate by countries the interest rate what you got the tag and by countries the hoga uh uh monetary aggregates what you got the tag and we achieve for any inflation targeting the which ya mo interest rate are cool again as to me uh interest rate mean any intermediate target but in the case of modis we are having exchange rate why do you think that is anybody yes very good rati yeah. because we are heavily dependent on imports rajya ka varamadu che rajya ka ufadda ge mi konti am pura abadu gina our cpi basket ke about 90% 80 90% is imported goods and services so ehem bhi ma exchange rate ka fluctuation ne as siamo imports ke agu bodu ve ge aharon ke price stability ya asar tak ke pura that's why exchange rate waki wa in bare ke part tam me masa ke pura this the main reason another reason is misal ka interest rates through ko puram bala iru ka rajya ke financial sector is not that developed and the interest rate pass through effect in the maldives is not that high misal ka mma interest rate da kuri assess a pass through through commercial banks to the general public is very low because as a financial sector is not so developed and there are few banks uh which actually uh dominates the market so that's why it is not that effective then to maintain the exchange rate at this particular level we use an operating target operating target can be used for any mihar dh officially it is rufia liquidity management but mihar bodam we use for any foreign exchange intervention rufia liquidity management me bolni a rufia liquidity misa ka rufia ke excess reserves banks ta hoga hunna minwaru waki minwari ka hifatta ge ma itru bi anudi nuni ma dabbi anudi waki minwari ka hifatta ge exchange rate a impact ko for example aswago ki misa ka rajya ka rufia gina vetse yamo misa ka vasu dollar rajya ka mihunna varo maramma to so like if people are getting more rupiah gain rupiah they bonim we will be demanding for more goods and more foreign currency you know so misaka rajyam beru beru daam ves gain rupiah they will say among gain dollar demand for an aero exchange rate and ever asar pure another thing is gain rupiah hori ma now people can consume more people can consume more means there will be more demand for imports foreign rupiah boni hai we are depend highly dependent on imports so ehem viva consumption ithru vima imports and eba asar imports eba ithru ve imports agina mi hun demand koram fasha fiya mo again exchange rate eba asar ko kende ehem viga rufia liquidity waki mi bare ke hifata mi masa ke purani then uh monetary policy mi rufia liquidity waki mi bare ke hifata we use monetary policy instruments no ni monetary policy tools ta ke which i will explain to you guys then foreign exchange intervention which yes, i will explain to you guys in more detail then uh yeah ek kuring ajig past no historical exchange rate regimes ta ka bala kam ga varnam there were several uh, exchange rate regimes we have uh, used 
सो so, 1981 का में फिदी गेंग आई एक पूरी का एक्सचेंज रेट मेंटेन पूरा मम्मी आई थ्रू मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ फाइनेंस एंड आल्सो देयर वाज अ पीरियड एसटीओ का इन इन फॉरेन एक्सचेंज डिपार्टमेंट किया डिपार्टमेंट का कॉमर्स एक्सचेंज रेट डिटरमिन पूरा मम्मी आई पीरियड इन एफ पर हो एमएमए ऑफ द इंग एस एमएमए के मेंडेट के दशक बी फॉल बी बी बैक सो देयर वाज अ पीरियड इन 1980s वेयर आवर करेंसी वाज पेग टू अ बास्केट ऑफ करेंसीज राज्य गिना इंपोर्ट करा कंट्रीज तक के करेंसीज ही मैंने बास्केट अका रुपया पेग को गए बी एयर कोरिया के दिए देन लेट 1980s इन 19 90s के मेरे तेरे यार हिसाब आ देर वाज अ मैनेज्ड फ्लोट सो फ्री फ्लोट एंड नो इट वाज इट वाज नॉट अ पेग सो फ्री फ्लोट एक गोता एक्सचेंज रुपया एक्सचेंज रेट ऑफ रुपया वाज अलोट टू फ्लक्चुएट अंडर मे अंडर अ पर्टिकुलर लेवल देन ए फॉर मिड 90s 90s थिंग फेशी गेंग 2011 ना हिसाब आ देर वाज a hard peg to us dollar so hard peg ke me bolani 1 u 1 mvr ki 1 am yani vari 1 us dollar ki me yani vari ke mvr directly me peg kurani so as you guys might remember there was a period when 1 uh, us dollar was equal to 12.85 no then 2011 ga me we got ki asal total 8 ke फाइनेंशियल क्राइसिस के साथ अपन राज्य की इकोनॉमी या मारा बोटन किट वे गेंग आई एक फोन टूरिज्म डबुमा एक हजार बावर कंक नाम के साथ अपन द इकोनॉमी वारा बोटन दब वे गेंग दी एंड वी वर फोर्स टू एक्चुअली चेंज आवर एक्सचेंज रेट रेजी सो व्हेन वी सो इन 2011 अप्रैल 2011 का वी एक्चुअली एड डिसाइडेड टू हैव टू पेक द वैल्यू ऑफ रुपया against us dollar within a horizontal band so what is specific band ke there ga fluctuates to wave ne rupya ya air decide kori air ke central in 12.8 hard peg ke in 12.85 ki central pair ki ek kam balaf eret ke plus or minus 20 percent a de there ga that is 10.28 per us dollar ya 15.42 per us dollar ya de there ga the value of the fluctuates were with an eye ekamaku because there was high demand for us dollar the exchange rate hit the upper band the official exchange rate hit the upper band within a few period of time wara kuda mudde se gethere it hit the upper band and you can see currently it is 15.42 so as to ehem ga ingina mi hum bunani mi haru ga exchange rate ki 15.42 way it come up as so it is originally a lot to fluctuate yeah it is a lot to fluctuate but because of the high demand it is at the upper band then kurim boning uh, rupee liquidity manage kurang we use some multi policy instruments known as multi policy tools that okay one of which is the minimum reserve requirement this is the equivalent of the reserve requirement in the case of modules so rajya ka misa ka if we want to reduce the uh, Uh, if we want to increase the level of rupiah in the market misa ka if we want to uh, commercial banks to increase they are lending to the people uh, and if we want to uh, do that then we will reduce the minimum reserve requirement minimum reserve requirement will reduce to the commercial banks will have more excess reserves which they can use to lend to commercial uh, to the public the public will lend to them they will use it for consumption investment and net exports then in hisab on real gdp we push to again that the opposite will happen if we want to uh, actually reduce the amount of rupee in the market we will increase the mrr here then we have standing facilities standing facilities ke bain de devattare one of which is the overnight deposit facility so overnight deposit facility ka mi vagata ki commercial banks in misa ka day to day running of their business Use of uh, if there is some excess money, they can keep this at the MMA at uh, uh, overnight. Overnight, completely, but they will get an interest for that. So, erong ege ane do humi thi me chua ve ke mi thani. 
ಬೆಂಕಿ money so uh in that case misaka interbank market thering if they do not get uh, any loan they can come to the mma and over at a uh, lombard facility use cooking uh they can borrow from mma overnight and okay, then uh, this will be at a quite high interest rate then again and do they will have to repay it back from again and do the next day then we have foreign exchange swap so foreign exchange swap rajya ke market ke rupiya liquidity manage kura sha foreign exchange liquidity manage kura us eba use kura foreign currency liquidity manage kura us eba use kura for example let's say commercial bank ek uh, they are having rupiya liquidity gethashi uh, kame so rupiya maduwani emi hum atuga ek emi hum atuga enough beru paisa hai ko erun they can actually give us their foreign currency then we will give them the equivalent uh, rufia to them so i mean i use for so egotam me exchange pura iruga we will agree kuriyan on the date ga misa ka me ke ms for no kimas for hum in the given rate aharum me the exchange pura na me we will exchange it back so gina fahara misa ka commercial bank ka tash coming asking mma approach for fee am pahun et exchange kura ro mma ko miskal fayda ay bar rate ga ye exchange hi gaadi then opposite will happen if misa ka commercial banks ga foreign currency liquidity ke tash karne pade ya ero emi hum ga to ga rupiya ho re ya mo de will give rupiya to us we will give foreign currency to them using our uh, reserves then ero are ka ve sama maturity ga this will be change back back hmm? so we call got come we work for any then the last one is open market operation open market operation ga me kura ko taki mma niha aso wa ga taki rajya ga economic system ga rajya ga banking system ga almost all the banks always has excess rupiya excess rupiya they always have they do not lend excess rupiya they keep it parked so every one gina fara what we have to do is open market operation mihingani to mop up this excess liquidity so uh aharum me uh mma me lend kurani me issue kurani certificate the certificate ga commercial banking me invest kurani invest kuri ma emi hum atu gori excess rupiya me nagani mma ya then me uh, open market operations can be certificate will last for about 7 days the no ni amount two weeks ekal got kami huna ni maturity then uh, once it matures we will give them back this particular rupiya with an interest em huna interest in then engane ka hama e hinga duwa hu me reverse kuram je he du hu es anekka ves mma in kuriya genda ne open market operation ne so e mi hum e thi anekka de if they want they can invest it back at the, Uh, uh, back in the uh, securities so as lo a money supply dakuram wagen because we have excess rupiah in the market money supply dakuram wagen ekota me kuri again dani and if you want to increase the money supply we will be actually buying securities from commercial banks erong emi huma to gonna certificates no ni securities mma gane for mma ing emi huna de ni rupiah e rupiah use ko gen they will be lending to the market and uh, economic boost and the end then currently open market operations are suspended by the mma since 2014 so age for hum mi buna ho reha excess reserve se they have been parking at pulling kiya the standing facility ka mean overnight deposit facility here they get an interest of 1.5% currently so minimum reserve requirement ke historical data ya bal ya so am ko we have uh, local currency uh, i'm almost done in haifa so we have local currency and foreign currency ge uh uh mrr so it is almost always at the same percent so there was a, 
a period where we had 35% requirement and that means 35% of all their foreign currency and local currency deposits should have been kept at MMA over a period of time. So until uh, 2015, until uh, very recently, Miyahar ke April Maha Hisaba, MRR ke Gotuga Mihori, 10%, they have to keep 10% of their deposits. And uh, you guys might have heard on uh, press or news that MMA reduced the MRR rate. So we reduced 10% in 7.5% uh, during April Masterega for both local currency and foreign currency because the banks were having some liquidity difficulties. And uh, as loans are, I mean, we have economy recession like Gautima, I mean, loan do purang itura, excess of fear, poor code them, they can remain to Marar Takuri. Then ODF, uh, I have explained. Then foreign exchange intervention. Foreign exchange intervention, like yes, look, because there is a high demand for, uh, uh, Misaka. Foreign exchange intervention, they call up a work to run, one of which is uh, Misaka. If there is not enough foreign currency in the market, then central bank will be selling foreign currency using the reserves to the market. Another way is Misaka Rajik, then we put it on Abadu Sadanjani because Rajik Abadu there is excess demand for foreign currency. Then by countries that they have excess foreign currency in the market. In that case, what the uh, central banks does is they actually buy foreign currency from the market and they sell the local currency to the market. So Rajega Mikurani, foreign currency, sell Mikurani Abadus. So under our foreign exchange intervention policy, we do sell home me hafta kus wakim ware, kuriha commercial banka me. Allocate Purani. So, ahar of share we decide our intervention policy. Me ani varke, me ani thamthamda sell Purani. So, ayab base ko gang me sales me hadani. And during the year, if need be, we revise this particular policies as well. So, come we ke commercial bank sang eba vikam foreign currency. Then we foreign currency use ko gang actually the commercial bank sell it to businesses sa thamthana to cater for import. Payments, no payments. Then also, now a Mivika emotere, a Himene, a Misaka Raja, and Beruga, Kuja Kiwang Hunayam, a Kujaka post fee Hadansha, a Kankavis, a main provide for then through commercial banks, and also medical purposes of this, a Kahala, a Gota Tibe, Iruga, Komiswaka, for Kodja Muntani. Then Covid situation, a Guli gang, we actually increased our. Intervention through commercial banks as well. Come a week ago, we come in work to West Coast for my PR. Then uh, you guys might know Zaka, me, and Rajam Bear, Dasurpuran Yamum, BM building, online portal that through for you can book dollar and then airport on $500 Nagag and you can travel. As to me, Yaki, me, MMA, BML. They uh, provide for the HS so that they can intermediate between the MMA and general public to provide these dollars to the travelers. Then, Egetura, Hajj and Umrah groups, the Kabenuva, all foreign currency requirements MMA for Kodde Mundani. Then, Sarukar Hisawa convinces Noni stand on enterprises, get Puriha foreign currency requirement with MMA for Kodde Mundani. Mainly because uh, you guys might remember, we have in 2016, the Fahu Kolo, there was a huge rise in the parallel market rates. Exchange rate, what about depreciate again? The then, in our analysis, we found that air what about the government projects that we didn't stand or enterprises that comes like HTC, MTCC, Stelco, etc. Then, we didn't know media. Parallel market a me dollar gun. The aim a market the ha border demand it through wagon rate much a meeting. So we decided to pull them out of the parallel market and then you have been over dollar and we may for the enemy. Egg Kurimbus we had been providing STO game we have garage at Teo Ether Kurum Benova. We have a facade we were providing a Kurims. Then, 
गवर्नमेंट के ऑल फॉरेन करेंसी रिक्वायरमेंट्स आर बीइंग केटर्ड बाय द एमएमए जैसा कि गवर्नमेंट के फॉरेन करेंसी डेट रिपेयरमेंट एंड नॉन ईएमए हम फॉरेन राज गवर्नमेंट एच इंपोर्ट फ्रॉम बेनम वनी नॉन ईएमए गवर्नमेंट को मैसेज के पूरा मी है बेर ट्रैवल फ्रॉम वेगेन और ट्रैवल स्टाइपेंड दे दे बेनम वनी नॉन ईएमए गवर्नमेंट स्कॉलरशिप के दशम में किया वा को दिन ना 1.5 डॉलर एम हो रहा है जैसे एमएमए में फोर फोर दिन सो एक बदल होगा बट गवर्नमेंट डज दिस गवर्नमेंट लिबे ऑल फॉरेन करेंसी अर्निंग्स एमएमए या मिमार को नहीं जैसा कि टीजीएसटी के कोटिक लिबे फॉरेन करेंसी ए थी एमएमए का मिमार को रहनी तो एमएमए मिलेनी फॉरेन करेंसी टू द लोकल करेंसी टू द गवर्नमेंट एक बदल देन मी फॉरेन करेंसी मीना करनी टू एमएमए अस दौलत के रिजर्व में वननी फॉरेन करेंसी दौलत के रिजर्व यूज को के वी आर कंडक्टिंग अवर इंटरवेंशन पॉलिसी so that's it so and i have added some uh, videos for you guys to uh, have a look at so it will be interesting to have a look at some of these things so that's it from my side if you have any questions please let me know and in the me